So, welcome to Jackson Community Church, which is always an ever-changing, you never know what's going to happen kind of place, especially when there's technology involved, and ether and spirits and all that kind of stuff. So, Bob, first thing, do we have the portable microphone ready? Great. So, I'm going to actually invite us first to center ourselves with music, but then... um, Kala is going to lead us in the call to worship, Bob. So when, when we come to that, if you would pass through the microphone so she can be audible to everyone, that would be great. Yeah, Kala will be up front So in a minute. So we're going to begin uh, with any announcements for the life of the church. And actually, I don't think there are any particularly, except that next week, February 13th, which is Valentine's weekend, we're going to welcome anybody who is joining our church And right now we have seven people who are planning to join, and most of them are actually here today. I think everybody's here today. So raise your hand if you're one of the people that's planning to join the church next week. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, okay, there you go. Yay. So we're going to be happy to have you join our community. And... um, So look forward to that as a special moment in the life of the community when we welcome people. Understand that when somebody joins us, we're not voting on them. We don't vote them in. They don't have to pass a test. Much like our open table, our community is open to those who choose us and choose to become active with us. Some people remain friends for the whole time they're with us. And uh, some people become members. The, di- the big difference between friends and members tends to be that you can vote on budgetary issues and that you can serve on the council. Um, but either way, however you are connected to us, uh, we love having you be part of our community. So we're looking forward to that. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church that I didn't make that is, are important that somebody wants to raise their hand and remind me about? I just want to say it's wonderful to see Ray joining Arden. Yes, absolutely. Hi, Ray. Everybody say hi, Ray. Hi, Ray. Everybody in church is waving at Ray. And we can see Ray up on the top, I think, of our screen. He's in the blue apron there. He's waving back at us or at least saying hi to us. We're going to now just come into this gathering, whether we're in Zoom or whether we're here in body in person, by centering ourselves. So we invite you to plant your feet on the floor, relax your bodies, open your hands, maybe close your eyes, or look out at the world, whatever you want to do, and just receive the gift of music. And Alan, if you'll play us some centering music, thank you. come to this place centered, but even if you come a little bit discombobulated, this whole story that we're going to focus on today is all about being discombobulated, so the Spirit works in mysterious ways and gives us a taste of what is coming. I'm going to invite Kala 
to lead us in the call to worship. And so, Kala, there's a microphone that we're going to hand to you. And Elizabeth, will you turn it on for her, if it will turn on? Press it down and hold it down for a minute, and it should turn green. There you go. And Kala, you want to hold that really close to your mouth. And just say hi to everybody, and let's make sure they can hear you. Hi. Do thumbs up if you can hear Kala. Thumbs up. All right. Okay, Kala, if you want to go ahead and read for us. She's going to lead us in the call to worship. The words will either be on your screen if you're in Zoom, or they will be in your bulletin if you are here with us. Long ago, you called the brothers from their nets and boats, and the sisters from their homes. You invite us, like them, to follow your way. Yet we do not always live the life to which we are called. We desire control. Instead of trusting you to guide our steps. We know that you love us. That you do not abandon us. And that you pursue us even when we turn away from you. Thank, Thank you, you for loving us unconditionally. unconditionally and, and meeting us wherever, wherever we might be on the journey. Now we invite your prayers, your prayers, and Kala, thank you. And if you guys want to turn, make sure that's turned off. God, please. Otherwise, we'll hear papers rustling and stuff. Thank you. So uh, the Battenfelder family is helping lead worship today. We invite first your prayers of concern. Anything that is on your heart or in your mind that is worrying you or troubles you or that you believe needs to be lifted up. We start in Zoom. If there are any concerns, please unmute if there's anything you wish us to pray for. Jeanette's checking it all out, seeing if there's any raised hands or anybody looking like they're okay. All's quiet in the Zoom front. Then here in the sanctuary, are there prayers of concern that you want to raise up? Jean's got one. And uh, again, we use the microphone so everyone can hear. I ask you all to pray for my sister and her son. Uh, he was in the hospital on Long Island. Uh, he fell down the stairs because he was weak. And when we got him in the hospital, it turns out he was riddled with stage four cancer. You couldn't hear me? Zim couldn't hear. He is riddled with stage four cancer. This is Jean's nephew. I'm sorry? That's your nephew, yes? That's my nephew. And your sister as well, you want prayers for her. She's trying to make peace with him after a long period of problems. Okay. But he's not going to last much longer. Please pray for them. What is his first name, if we could have that? Larry. 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 For Jean's nephew, Larry, who is coming towards the end of his life. And Sue has a prayer. Yeah. Woo. Sorry. Good morning. Can we stay special prayers for Arden and Ray as they are entering a new chapter in their beautiful marriage together? God bless them. So we have Arden and Ray even here on the screen with us this morning, and we are holding them in the light, holding them in prayer as they begin a different chapter on the journey that they are taking together. Um, I believe I've explained that Ray is on hospice, and that's quite real. Other prayers of concern here in the sanctuary. I know that we've had other people who have experienced deep losses in the last week or two between friends and family members. I know that we also are trying to lift up parts of the world where there is impending conflict or the threat of such. And we pray also for our family members, some of whom may be actually called into service to respond in areas of concern around the world they may be the first people there or supporting the first people there. So for those who
who respond in times of trouble, whether it's a natural disaster or military conflict, so many different ways that people need help and support. We raise them up. And we raise up our sister church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe, both always in concern and always in appreciation and hope that they are our partner church in this conference-wide partnership with the nation of Zimbabwe, but they are our community and we hold them up in the light. We turn to your prayers of gratitude and celebration. And let me begin by saying two prayers of, maybe even three prayers of gratitude. First of all, for oil deliveries, yay! Because this sanctuary was down to 41 degrees on Friday. And with a little bit of rebooting of technology and an oil delivery the day before, we actually have heat this morning, yay! So we can actually be here together and be comfortable. So for those kind of things, for the people that make those deliveries, sometimes in emergency conditions so that others may be safe, for the people that were out through the snowstorm that hit us again and made our world beautiful, but also made it dangerous for a while, the people that are out plowing and sanding and shoveling through the night and all day long, that we might be able to travel, get out, do the things we need to do and connect. This valley, like so many other places, is short of help. And so sometimes people are working double shifts. It's hard to find people to fill all the roles that need to be filled right now. So for those that come out that do these jobs that keep taking on these responsibilities year after year, we give thanks. How about your prayer? Oh, and my final one. We had a youth group with us yesterday. The Ipswich Youth Group, fifth through grade through seventh grade, came up yesterday morning. They skied with cross-country equipment loaned to them by the Jackson Cross Country Ski Center. They went out to the Coco Cabin. They came back here. They made beautiful art. They wrote haiku poetry. They prayed in our sanctuary. They lit candles here. Their prayers were for the world, um, for climate change, for resolution of injustice where it might be happening. Uh, prayers for prisoners, prayers for people that are without shelter. Amazing prayers. And they were real in the poetry that they wrote. And we'll talk about that later in the service. But just to be able to connect with another church and they're gonna invite us and some of our youth to go visit them in Ipswich later this year, maybe in the summer, maybe do Audubon stuff or something like that, we'll see. So, but just for the enduring connection with other communities, we are not a faith community by ourselves. We are connected and a reminder of the beauty of where we are, that their prayers were all about thanks for the gorgeous winter wonderland that they came to yesterday. So now your prayers of gratitude. We'll start in Zoom. So if anybody in Zoom wants to unmute. You guys are really quiet. Can you even hear me? Nod if you can hear me. All right, they're smiling and nodding. That's good. That's, that's something. Anybody happy? You're happy. They're nodding. They're happy. OK. I guess it's all on you guys in the sanctuary. Anybody here want to be happy about anything out loud? Okay, they're quiet too. Uh, Jan, did you want to say something? Yes, I did. I did want to have a clear of gratitude um, that uh, in the ice storm uh, down here in Massachusetts, I had to drive to Norwood from Plymouth uh, in a strange van because Barry was having his can driving controls put in our van. And we had to spend five hours there while they adjusted it. And I got to drive back home in the ice storm. And not only did he get the, but he does have his hand driving controls now and is starting his driving lessons. So we're, I am very excited and grateful for that. And I'm also very excited and grateful that I made it back and forth because I did pray a lot during the ride. I bet you did. Jan, thank you. 
there's a reality check for you. Um, for those that don't recall, uh, Barry, Jan's husband, was in a ski accident, and he's paralyzed from the waist down. But he does a lot of amazing things at this point. He's driving. He plays golf. He does amazing things, so to remind us. Um, also, thank you to those who know technology in a different way than I do. Alan and Bob today are troubleshooting sound stuff so that we can have a good experience shared together. So I know there's some hiccups, but give thanks for those that can pay attention and keep us connected. Then I'm going to invite us to go into silence together. Please pray with me. Oh, holy God. We lift up your children all around the world. We lift up those we cannot see, but those who are going into harm's way or live in a place where harm is, in, is imminent. We give thanks and we ask that you will pay attention to those your children here in this community, whether we are gathered through Zoom or here in body and the other communities that we are connected to. We ask that you will be with all of us, that you will hear what we lift up out loud and what we have lifted up in silence. And we ask that you will hear the words that we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing the first song. Um, we've been seeing this throughout this journey that we're taking, which is a focus on journey. Won't you let me be your servant? It's page 374 in the 374 in the red pew hymnal. Please rise if you're able, if you're singing here in person. We're going to sing three verses today. There are four, there are five verses on the screen if you're looking at the screen. But we're going to um, sing the first three, Alan. And we have two readings from scripture this morning, and who's reading? Sue is reading, and so we're going to just turn on the microphone, and those readings will be either be up on the screen, or you'll find them on the back of your bulletin. So don't come any further than that, otherwise we'll have more feedback. Thank you. They can see everybody. Okay. Good morning. This is a reading from Mark, chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, 
Jesus calls the first disciples. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired men and followed him. A reading from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Jesus calls the first disciples. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long and have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Thank you, Sue. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get down off the stage, the day is, and I'm going to put a puzzle in front of everybody. We already tried this puzzle this morning, and I learned about this puzzle from the Ipswich Youth Group, and I immediately stole it for our purposes. And there's an insert in your bulletin because I think you're going to have trouble with the puzzle, and I suspect you're all going to want to play with it and see if you can figure it out. And I'm going to give you through the sermon to see if you can come up with the answer. But for those who are in Zoom, I hope what you can see is there are nine circles. They're in a grid, three across, three down, circles. Here's the challenge. Without lifting your pen or doubling back or anything like that, drawing four straight lines, they can be diagonal, up, down, any way you want. Can you find a way to connect all the dots? Can't be three lines or four five lines, four lines, no lifting your pencil, no doubling back. Can you connect all the dots or draw, draw lines through all the dots? So you have until the end of the sermon for us to demonstrate the solution. But right now, we're going to have one reading that Kate Battenfelder is going to read for us, and then we're going to dive into the sermon. So where's the, who has the microphone right now, please?
Thank you. We're going to help you all meditate about what this scripture is about, and Kate's going to help us by reading. The Real Work by Wendell Berry. It may be that when we no longer know what to do, we have come to our real work, and that when we no longer know which way to go, we have come to our real journey. The mind that is not baffled is not employed. The impeded stream is the one that sings. This story is a story about work and what your real work might be and what your real journey is. I'm offering you a puzzle because I want you to be uncomfortable and by the end, maybe think differently about how to solve something. Early in the journey, Christ's journey, he's already preaching in synagogues. We've heard something about those stories. He's gone back to his hometown and he's been kicked out of his hometown. He's been in the wilderness to prepare himself for what he is doing now. And now he begins to build a team of other people that he is taking away from their regular contexts and putting into a new way of living and being. Things to notice about these stories. In the story from Mark, the very first line says that John was arrested. That's John the Baptist. The cousin of Jesus who had baptized him and was already known throughout the land as a preacher. Some people thought he was the Messiah, although he kept saying, no, no, that person is coming. I'm preparing the way. And John was such a troublemaker that he was arrested by the king. He's in jail by the time Jesus goes walking along the shore of Galilee, which is also the lake called Gennesaret. They're the same place, just different languages, different names for the same body of water. Jesus has been preaching. He's been baptized by his troublemaking cousin. So this story begins in politics. He's already on the radar screen of the authorities. And he's probably known to the fishermen that he's talking to. They've either been following John already, or they've been hearing the rumors about these preachers and the healing they do, the miracles that they're performing. But when he comes walking along the shore, they've been working a long shift. And fishing for them is a nighttime activity. They were fishing during the night in the early hours of dawn. They were fishing in teams of brothers because that's how the economic system worked. And fishing was not a leisurely pastime. It wasn't something they did for recreation. And it also was by the time that Jesus walked through the world, no longer a path towards economic independence. It was almost indentured servitude. How many of you know people now who work jobs maybe three jobs to pay their bills or still can't pay their bills. People that we serve at the way station who might have a roof over their heads but can barely make, barely make ends meet, who will be knocked down by any storm that comes if they get sick and they can't work a few shifts so that they can't meet rent or they can't buy their medicine or they can't fill their oil tank or they can't put gas in their car, or if their car breaks down and they can't get to work. Anything that happens is a cascading set of dominoes that will knock them out. Even the way that people here in the Valley live and work is almost unsustainable for many of them. And definitely in the time of the sons of Zebedee and Peter and his brother, it was not a path out to anything better. When my grandfather became a coal miner, he came from a family that had lived in the mountains where there were company towns. Has anybody ever heard of company towns? The company got you coming and going. They had you working in the mine 
where your health was already being affected. My father, my grandfather died due to black lung. But the people that were being raised there, the children that were being educated there, everything they bought from the company store at inflated prices using company script instead of cash meant that they were always owing the company more. It was a way of keeping people locked into their jobs, always owing something, so they were always working towards the next paycheck so that they might be able to stay afloat. And that's what it was like for the fishermen. People in Jerusalem, governing bodies in Jerusalem, controlled the permits to fish. They controlled the price at which everything was removed from the water and sold in the marketplace. And they did their business with economic units that were kinship units, which is why that you hear the brothers are fishing together and they're fishing in teams, the sons of Zebedee and Simon Peter and his brother, all fishing together. The government uh, basically negotiated its fishing rights with these kinship units. But it was a power differential that didn't work in the favor of the fishermen. So bear that in mind. We have politics and we have economics already in this story. Maybe you didn't know that. I didn't. And then here comes Jesus walking along and he's being followed by all these people who already know all about him and they want to hear him preach and they want to hear more and get more from him. And they crowd him as he's walking along the shore and they push him right up against the boats. And so after these men have been fishing all night long, dragging these nets through the shallow waters, working in teams with two boats, trying to catch something, and they've come up empty, and they're exhausted, and they're fixing the nets and cleaning the nets. He asks if they'll go back out on the water with them and take him out so he can get a little bit of distance from the people that he's going to preach to and talk to so he can have some perspective. And they say, sure. And they go back out on the water. And they're telling him what a bad night it's been. And after he's preached and he's observed what's going on with the boats, then he says, well, let's try it a different way. Let's throw the net over the other side and let's go out in deeper water. They fished in the shallows of the waters. They didn't fish out in the middle of the water. Their nets were designed for a shallower part of the lake. And Jesus is not a fisherman. These men do this every night. They know what they're doing. It is their livelihood. And they're exhausted. But when he says, try it a different way, they're good sports about it. He's already earned some trust from them. And so they do it. They cast their nets out again in a different direction, in a different part of the waters, and they get a different result. Suddenly, they're hauling in a huge catch that is almost overturning these small boats, about 28 feet long. Ginger looked it up the other night for us. Not very big for the catches that they were hauling in. And so they make it back onto the shore. And Jesus, who's already gotten their trust, who, he's had them do unusual things already all morning long, says to them, why don't you leave it all behind? Why don't you walk away from this unjust system where you are indentured to this livelihood and come with me and find out what happens next? We know, we know the end of the story that they will walk with him for three years down all kinds of paths into the face of danger. They'll be confused most of the time. They'll get it wrong most of the time, but they will be the ones that he trusts with the work that he has begun because he believes it has to go on. These imperfect rough men who trust him enough to first try their own livelihood in a different way and get a different result. And then when he says, leave it all behind, 
Don't stay oppressed. Don't stay locked into this role that you can never work your way out of. Walk in a new direction for a new purpose. They leave it all behind. The sons of Zebedee leave their father in the boat with the hired men. Now, I, I want you to know, and we're going to see it next week's story, when they say they walk away, it doesn't mean they have no connection with their families. In point of fact, next week, we're going to see that Jesus visits one of their homes and heals someone. So it's not like they're abandoning their family altogether, but they do have families, and yet even those relationships are going to be transformed and changed because these men have found a new purpose, and they're not sure what it is yet, because right now in this story, all they've done is put down their nets and walked away from everything. But how many times in our lives have we done that? I actually said yes to something that was so revolutionary that we put down everything we thought we knew, everything we thought we believed, all the ways that we were locked into roles and identities and systems that were not serving us well and took a different look at it and said, maybe this could be different and actually participated in some kind of change that flips over the whole world. Did anybody solve the puzzle yet? You did, Fred? You solved it? Okay, Calla's going to go look at your piece of paper and see if you really solved it, and you're going to trace it for her. And then Calla's going to show us, everybody else in the sanctuary, what the solution is. You did it? All right. Uh, Fred, what did you do that helped you solve the puzzle? Okay, the key thing that Fred says about this puzzle is that you go outside the box and you go back in again. If you looked at this puzzle and you were locked inside that grid and you didn't look past it, you maybe missed an opportunity. Cal is going to show us what it looks like when you go outside the grid and you solve the puzzle in four lines that go through every circle, but it took some different kind of thinking than you would have expected. Can everybody in the sanctuary see that? All right, I'm going to bring my computer over so the people in Zoom can actually see what we just did. Can you guys see that in Zoom? All right. Do you see how she had to go outside the grid to so solve the puzzle? Now imagine doing that with your job, with your family, with your community with your sense of purpose. Evie has a poem that she's going to read for us that really brings home what this story is about. But remember, on this journey that you are taking when we follow this way, this path that is led and accompanied by love, it will take you into uncomfortable places. It will open your eyes if you let it. It will change your perspective. It will overturn what you believe you knew. And you will be a new and a different person as you go on this journey because no one can walk this journey and remain unchanged. This journey that we take together, following and accompanying and being servants of love, changes all of us. This is the opportunity. This is the challenge. And so, Evie, um, just say hi to everybody first. Hello. Can you all hear Evie? All right, read as loud as you can, Evie. Go for it. Sometimes you hear a voice through the door calling you. As a fish out of water hears the waves, come back, come back. 
This turning toward what you deeply love saves you, Rumi. Will you read the last line again for us as loud as you can? This turning toward what you deeply love saves you, Rumi. This poem by Rumi ends, this turning, what, turning toward what you deeply love saves you. That's what's happening in these stories. Regardless of politics, regardless of economics, perhaps because of those things and all the other social realities of his time, what Christ invites us to do is to turn, to hear the call of love, and by following what we love deeply, to be saved. Thanks be to God. And thank you for your leadership this morning. Um, and make sure the microphone's off. Cool. All right. Uh, and did everybody have fun with your puzzles? We'll do it again sometime. Torture you some more. But right now, we're going to turn to the time in our service when we first remind you that we rely on your giving, your very faithful giving, and you have helped us remain a viable, vital part of the Valley and the world. And we continue to ask for that commitment and that faithfulness, whether you give through an envelope or online, jxncc.org, or you pledge at the beginning of the year, however you do it, we appreciate it. You have helped us continue to be a partner here and in other parts of the world. And now I turn us towards our communion service. You'll find the aspects of the communion inside your bulletin, or you'll find them up on your screen. And I'm going to go down to the communion table now. Can I borrow somebody? All right, we're low on inserts, but we'll make it work. Do you guys have two bulletins? Can I borrow one? Thank you, just one. Thank you so much, Brian. First of all, welcome to the table, the chaotic, crazy, messy table, obviously. This is a table set by love. Just as those doors are opened by love, they are never locked. Anyone can walk through them. All people are welcome at the table that we set together because it is not our table. This church doesn't own this table. Alan doesn't own the table. I don't own the table. The deacons don't own the table. This table is set by the love of Christ, by the love of God, by holy and healing and transformative love, however you have met it in your life. Okay, good question. Does everybody have a communion set? If you don't, raise your hand. You need two. Okay, we need two up here. And if you're in Zoom, we are inviting you to make sure you have all your communion elements. You'll want something to drink, like some kind of beverage, and maybe something to nibble. I have banana bread. Banana bread is part of communion today. And I'm going to ask you now to join us in the prayer of confession. I'll read. And you guys, if you just want to listen and just sort of center yourself while we listen, that would be great. Lord, you call us to drop the nets and climb out of the boats. Like the brothers and sisters before us, you invite us to leave behind what is harmful and oppressive. You ask us to walk your way in the world, to belong to you. Help us along the way. If we don't know what to do, let us learn from others who have more experience. And if we don't know what to say, let us simply show up. Sometimes when we encounter sickness, we withdraw. Even worse, we may avoid or criticize people struggling with addictions, fears, mental health, or other vulnerabilities. Instead, let us cultivate healing, 
in more sustainable forms. And God, when we see grief, let us not retreat into courtesy, leaving mourners to their privacy and loneliness. Help us offer our presence as comfort. Sometimes when we notice poverty, we offer a handout. Lead us to go deeper, leaning and learning to support people's dignity and nourish potential by building equitable partnerships. Sometimes we see a need and we have this idea that we either can't do anything or that we can fix it all ourselves. Instead, allow us to respond through collaboration with others who are also involved in an issue. And along the way, grant us the courage to ask for and accept help when we need it. Holy One, sometimes when we see evidence of authority and wealth, we believe the situation is universal and beneficial. Instead, prompt us to express gratitude where and when abundance and leadership work for the good of the community. And then enable us to change the status quo so that resources, rights, and power are accessible to all people, along with a sense of accountability and reciprocity. And when we make decisions, help us choose actions guided by your compassionate and ethical way to nurture hope and resilience. Be with us in our seeing, being, living, and loving. When we forget and go back to the metaphorical nets and boats, call us to you once more. Draw us away onto your path, your way. Amen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. We lift them to the skies. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company, of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name. Evermore praising you and singing together. and sisters, pray with me. We ask that holy love will be present here in this part of our journey right now with us. And we also ask that for those who cannot be with us, that holy love will meet each person, each child of God, beloved of God, right where he or she may be meeting that love. We ask that this holy and transformative love will bless the elements, whether it's banana bread or bread, whether it's grape juice or coffee, however it is that we partake of the sacrament today, that holy love will bless our participation and our remembrance in the presence of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there are so many stories about how Christ breaks bread. And one of them is another version of the story that we heard this morning when after Christ had been executed and placed in the tomb and been there three days. And then those who went back to mourn found an empty tomb and a stone rolled away. 
Those who were fishermen were so grief stricken and so weary and overwhelmed, they went back to their boats. They went back to the lake and they started fishing again. They went back to the old way of being. And then they saw a man on the shore grilling fish and waiting for them to come in. And he told them because they were struggling with their nets, try it again. And they did. And as they came in, Peter realized that the one he saw was Christ. And he leaped out of the boat and started racing towards the shore to be reunited with the one that he thought was gone forever. Love will come back from all things and find you where you are and it will cook breakfast for you. It will change you and call you out of your comfort zone and give you what you need and help you help others to find what they need. We remember the stories of how food was part of what it is to be on a journey with love when we are fed and when we feed others. And so this morning, when we take up our bread, when we take up our little round wafers or our big chunk of banana bread, let us remember that love meets us where we are and it makes breakfast for us and it changes us and it helps us feed others. Brothers and sisters, partake of your bread, partake of what element you might have in Zoom. And as you take, do you guys have it? And as you take a bite, do so in remembrance of love, broken open for you. Take me. This story takes place on a body of water. And it is a body of water that at different times will be so stormy that Christ will calm it. And it is a body of water that feeds those who make their living on it. Water is so much an element of the journey that Christ takes from the time that he draws a woman to pay attention to him by asking her to give him some water from a well and tells her that he is living water, to transforming water into wine. And on the last night of his life, pouring out a cup for others and serving others before he served himself and sharing that cup around and asking that after he was gone, when they lifted a cup to their lips, they would remember him. And that they would lift a cup to the lips of others. So that love too was passed on. Today, when we lift this cup, let us remember, let us partake and be changed by the fruit of the vine and the love that calls us to a new way of being. Drink and remember. Brothers and sisters, we are not alone. God made us. We are not alone. We have each other. Can anything separate us from the love of Christ? No. 
In all these things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us has been proven. Neither death nor life, neither messenger of heaven nor ruler on earth, neither what happens today nor what may happen tomorrow, neither power from on high nor power from below, nor anything else has the power to separate us from the love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we're going to sing two songs. We're going to ask you to stand for Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. If you're here in the sanctuary, that's on page 404 in your hymnal. And then we're going to sing the benediction and close out our service today. benediction. The words will be up on the screen or in your bulletin. <laughs>
brothers and sisters, may this turning toward what you deeply love save you, and may you go in peace. Go in peace.